I actually used to be a film major at San Diego State University, right. and, yeah. we're, and he's like, so I'm, I'm going to do this for you. So he basically gave it to us for free to shoot there on a Sunday, and we shot during the day, and we just had all our friends show up. So it was a, just a fictional show. Were there, I mean, so there were two canines, and? Um, it was just, it's just canines. Just canines? Yeah. Um, which is, I mean, the, op the opening scene is just canines, which consists of our main character, and then the two backups. The guy, the guy who was playing drums, that's Joel P. West, who wrote all the music, and right. he wrote the music for canines, right, right. and then and created that fictional band. So. And this, just, just to follow up, San Diego indie rock scene, what drew you to set it there in particular? I mean, was it something that you knew, or, or you just yeah. thought it was a good, okay. I, um, I, I lived in San Diego for 10 years, oh. and, and was just really familiar with that small, intimate um, indie scene, and had never seen any it highlighted before, so that's, that's where that came from. Great. Yeah. I was wondering about when you were writing the movie and Joel writing the music, how did, were you guys working together at all or was it did one come before the other? Because they obviously play really well either. Oh yeah, thanks. Yeah, we wanted um I mean, I wanted it to have a lot of music in it, but I I typically don't really like music montages in movies that are just transitional or things like that. So I wanted every every song to be pretty to to be like a scene, you know, and to actually reveal something about the character and it's difficult on a first time but if you actually listen to the lyrics and and digest them you're you're learning a lot of things about the character with every song that he sings and you um, can you can listen to them oh yeah yeah the, online the whole album is, the whole canines album is online <laughs> and it's so good it's really good yeah if you take the time to listen there it's a it's a 12 song album a lot of the songs are not in the movie, but um, I think maybe four or five of the songs from the album are in the movie. And if you listen to the album like all the way through, it's like another movie in itself, and it'll reveal a lot of things about the character that, that even I didn't know. Um, but Joel and I worked um, pretty much side by side. Like as I was going, I was trying to, as I was writing, I knew that. Um, I wanted, you know, I wanted it to open up on a song that basically introduces his, this guy as kind of a, a brooding hard ass. So I wanted the first song to kind of explode, and I just explain it to to Joel, and we talked. He knew like the backstory of where this character's headspace was when he was writing the album, which is right off directly after the death of his mom, and basically escaping all the shit that he left in Ohio. And so um, he, so as I was going, there would just be a spot, like he knew that, I knew that we were gonna, the first time his sisters arrived, the first like kind of nice song was going to be with all the kids and we needed it to have something that the kids would interact with it somehow. And so that's basically how we wrote the album. Um, any other questions? These are all yeah, wonderful who, questions. Who came up with the uh, idea for the art projects and the, uh, <laughs> the installations? It was pretty cool. Oh, actually. Yeah, <laughs> cool. yeah all right. Go to the next year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah, it was really fun for it because we're I was tapping into a, the art scene in San Diego, so Joel, um, so I had because Joel is a singer, great singer songwriter, and he was able to write all this music from another character's perspective, which is something that is pretty rare, I think, for a singer-songwriter to be able to have an opportunity to do. And the same with Hess, who's a visual artist in San Diego, asked her to to create all of the art for this Clark character. So, you know, I told her he's like, he, he went to art school, he knows, he knows a bit about art, but he just does it for fun. Like, this is, and it can be silly and it can be stupid and doesn't even, and so, um, but I actually really like all the art that she <laughs> did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even, even like those dolphins, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so she, she created all the art, art in the, in the movie.
Um, and a side note, we're going to be launching a Kickstarter next week where um, you can pre-order the DVD with all the extra features and everything, and we have various um, stages of, of rewards that you can get. And one of the things is that you can get custom art made specifically, like a portrait of you in that felt that um, that that Hess will will make specifically for for you. Um, and she's she's pretty incredible. She does a lot. Like her real art does actually incorporate a lot of felt felt type um, types. She does these giant like wall portraits of people or places just all in felt. It's really cool. If I give enough money, can I get a video of my eyes eating? <laughs> yeah. 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 That's awesome. If you give enough money, we'll make a video of anything for you. Okay. <laughs> How much money for a space station? Yeah, oh. honestly, like three bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just dying to do it again. How how did the two of you join the project? Was it regular just auditions or? Um, actually, uh, I'm I'm not an actor, I'm a musician, and uh, uh, Trevor, one of the co-producers, he saw a YouTube video of me and, and had wanted to work with me for a while, I guess. Um, and he said that I might be good for this, so. I got to audition, um, and uh, Brad Hankey, I that's his last name, I'm afraid I'm going to say it wrong, but he, he was uh, helping with the casting, and he got me to do some like improv at the end of the scene, so he's really one of the main reasons I made it to the callbacks. And, and he's uh, the actor that plays the radio uh, host. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I got the callback, and then Destiny called, and I was super excited, and I shot it so quick. But it's been like a awesome ride since then. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Seth and I have done a bunch of films together, and uh, one of them, the first one we did, it was called Short Term 12, which was a little short film that we made that that ended up actually winning Best Short at Sundance a few years ago, which was really cool, and that started our relationship. And um, yeah, and then he was like. Would you drive down to San Diego to play this DJ named Space Face? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of how that worked out for me. My favorite part was every time he jumped on Dominic in that fight scene, he, he yelled, Space Face. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, it had to have to. Yeah. <laughs> I was kind of joking around with him because I was like, Thank you so much for keeping that take where I yell space face when I tackle him because you didn't give me any other choice. <laughs> I never did it without going space face. <laughs> I think it's so funny that he yells out a name out. <laughs> Good guy. Solid guy. I started writing February of last year, and then I was specifically writing it as a as a project that we could shoot on our own. Um, I we were waiting for funding for another movie, and we we're just waiting too long. So in in June, we just decided to shoot this one. So I started writing in February, and then we start pre-production in June, and then we started production in July. We shot for 18 days, um, and then finished like the end of August, and then we had a cut into Sundance in October, or early October, a rough, and then and finished it maybe like two days before Sundance. Yeah. How do you uh, come up with the title? Um, it was a line in the movie that we got that we ended up cutting, <laughs> and the. And the title just changed. We had an alternate title that I was trying to convince everybody of, but it didn't really make that much sense. It was, I'm not a hamster. And <laughs> so now we got barred until we went back to the original. <laughs> it had to be, I am not, though. <laughs> you wouldn't budge on that. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird title. Um, I don't know. I don't like ti I don't like the title of anything that I've ever made. Including my own name. <laughs> yes. Well, um, well, first of all, wh what scene was it cut from that that line? Where it was a whole scene where uh, where the main character um, beats up this jock for stealing a 
a t-shirt that he wanted at a thrift store. <laughs> and the jock calls him, calls him a hipster, and then he beats him up and then says, I'm not a fucking hipster. <laughs> Oh, uh, what features might be on the DVD? What, what kind of extras? Well, you'll get to see that scene. Oh, okay. wow. that's the thing that he was telling you that was cut out that made him kind of even more of an asshole. Yeah, ah. it's a long scene too. Yeah. I I really like the scene. It's a it's a I think it's like a t ten minute long scene where he uh, you actually see the breakup or the you see his ex girlfriend telling him for the first time that she's dating Space Days. Um, and, uh, so you'll you'll see that scene. You'll see um, you'll see the full Clark art of the of the talking eyes, which is pretty amazing. It's really hypnotic. Sometimes I'll like I'll when I started watching it just to sometimes I'll go and just watch it and then find myself just watching it in a loop. Like <laughs> ten minutes will pass and I'll still be like watching his eyes. Speaking gibberish. So there's, I mean, there's all, and then we have like behind the scenes stuff and things up in, from up in Sundance, which is, we had a pretty awesome party up at Sundance where Canines played and then Space Face played and it was a huge dance party and it was, and we basically just mimicked that scene in the movie. We, uh, Canines played and then the lights went off and the black lights came on and glow sticks came out and Space Face just like pumped up the party. It was, and he, and Clark even did some breakdance moves. He did. Oh, yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Is there more in the film as to why he's upset with his dad? There is not, and there never was. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately. Well, I don't know. Maybe fortunately, because mm -hmm. maybe I, yeah, if we did put that in, you'd think it was cheesy. That was like the from the very beginning. There was. Um, Kind of a debate, a debate whether or not that was going to go in. And I think if we did put in that, like, in that scene, the beach, or in some other scene, if that information came out, I think it would just make it a, a very different movie. Um, I was more interested in, in just seeing the beginning of good things starting in this movie, because um, he's so. So, so so dark and low in the beginning of the movie. It just felt it didn't feel genuine to have big things happen. I just wanted really small. Like I just wanted to get the dad and him talking. That's it. And that's I what happened. That's a good job, like with um, showing how a man grieves. Like he was grieving his mother, and he was also grieving with the girlfriend. Yeah. Which is like a double whammy. So you can that anger and yeah. yeah, I mean it's a weird double whammy, and it's also in my mind the exact same thing. Like the, I mean I, I think there's a little bit of it. If you do see this behind the scenes scene, you'll see that he saw this girlfriend that in the same way that he saw his mom. Like she was kind of like this mature person who was taking care of him. Um, and so I feel like that breakup was just make like he was using that relationship to cover up this loss of his mom and then it was just like it was happening again you know and so um yeah in my mind like everything i mean in dominic too when we were talking about every every scene where he blows up and does something horrible the act dominic was thinking about his mom you know and all the the unfairness of the world um, any other just questions? One, about the tsunami, it was so. I, I hearing the timeline is great too because this is out now. You know, like you just shot it this past summer, mm -hmm. and it seems so so fresh still, right? I mean, when you started the whole project was right just after the tsunami, I guess, or right, right around that time, and yeah, it was shortly after. Yeah. yeah. So how did that? I mean, what was your process in, in getting that in? Because it's very effective, I thought. Yeah. I mean, it just goes into like this guy. I mean, he's the main character is just you know he he does write whiny music. Like he writes music that is saying "woe is me" in my life and like um, and putting in the tsunami footage. I think 
for him was was um, it was a way of putting his life in perspective a little bit and slowly letting him realize that his life. Because the truth is, you look at his life, it's really good. Everyone loves him. He's got a wonderful best friend, amazing sisters. Like, I think, I think this putting in the tsunami footage is like, it's like, hopefully, I mean, at that moment, it like causes a breakdown. But I think, um, in my mind, it's like putting him. It's a beginning. He's putting his life in a little bit of perspective and. You know, and when he's relating to this girl who, who um, Mickey Endo, who like gave her life for her whole town, I, I think it's a, it gives you a little bit of perspective into the type of person he wishes he was. You know, mm -hmm. um, and in my mind, I hope he's on the journey to that. Yeah,